Hey everyone, this is Sam and Mike from Wargamer Online and today we've got another unboxing to go through and this is Endure the Stars by da -da -da, Grimlord Games. So it's created by Adam Smith. We've had a brief look at it. This one's still in the wrapper. This one's been opened and this was given to us by them to, to do a review. So thank you very much for, for giving us one of these, or both of these actually. Um, we've had a brief look on the back of the box just to see what sort of game it is. And pretty much from the outlook, you know, reading one bit of a blurb, the, the humans have got to the point where they create um, robots or monsters, yep. gen genetic splicing, and they've created these monsters that they're using to go and explore a planet that they've been off to maybe inhabit, I don't know. And these monsters have gotten out of control and basically killed everybody or killed the majority of the people on the ship and taken over. And you play as one of the humans from the team and you've got to try and survive or kill the monsters depending on what the mission is. And it does say, so there's 12 exciting missions and you can use them as standalone games or you can play a campaign with multiple options that are in there. Um, the ship is called the NWE Hikari. I don't know what NWE means, but New World something, I don't know. And the planet they were trying to go to doesn't say, it just says destination planet. Right, so on the back of here we've got the contents, but we'll probably be better off just opening it, having a look, and then we can check the back of the box. Yeah, well, it's one to six players in this as well, isn't it? Yeah, so the, on here it does say ages 14 plus, so I don't know whether that's down to violence or miniatures or there's some sort of thing in there that makes it a 14 or higher or maybe it's the complexity of the game it does say it's a very um, easy to understand dice mechanic so i don't think it's difficult we're just going up the back though it does look like there's a lot of bits to it so it look it, just at a quick glance it looks like it, it's going to be there's quite a bit to it yeah though. definitely right okay let's have a look inside <clears throat> Do, do, do. All right, this is. We may as well put that one to one side for now. Yeah, that see, that's the main core game, I think. Isn't this it? is the core game. Yeah. Quite heavy as well. There's a lot of stuff inside here. Um, probably better if I open it that way around. Nice box, as we've come to expect. That's the standard in boxing miniatures nowadays. Right, well, we've got a lot. A lot of tiles, tiles. Yep. and a lot of really cool marine cards as well. That's very cool. That reminds me of Mass Effect. Um, we have, these are all of the counters. So we've got ability, it says ability tokens. You've got scout, captain, medic, marine, psychic, and engineer. And I'm not sure, but these look like the characters because we've, we've had a look at the character models. Yeah, the, yeah that's, what, that's what I'm taking from it. Is there is a model to each card. Six of those. Then you've got the radar token. So this is showing you um, what is turning up on, on the table. You've got noise tokens, which are these ones here. So I imagine very similar to zombie side if you played that. If you shoot your weapon, if you break open a door, then you make noise. And these indicate where the monsters will, will be drawn to. Because the AR, it's basically controlled by the game itself. Okay. Again, very much like Zombie Side. If you've ever played that, you can have six people, who, and you play in a cooperative game against the game, which is really good. They're quite decent games to actually play with friends, rather than having to kill each other every single game that you play. You've got injury tokens, which are these ones with the blood marks on them. Um, you've got door tokens. You've got exit tokens, uh, and objective tokens. So a whole host of card tokens inside but it may not be a case on it for each mission you need every single card no there maybe some that are only allocated to certain missions and opening this we didn't see any little bags so i would say you might want to get a couple of bags just to put these tokens in because there are so many of them yeah. so we'll move those out the way next we've got the double-sided tiles and this is for actually playing the game on and these are again high high quality you've got good printed layouts on them that looks like some sort of scientist's lab um, maybe like a forest thing inside there it looks almost like art artwork but yeah, it is artwork definitely. but someone's actually drawn this out those two are the same so do you reckon you could probably with the, the potentials there to sort of make your own map with this as well i imagine you could make your own map um, if, if that's the sort of thing that you do anyway you could quite easily design a map and print it and um, or draw your own map out and you can do as many games as you want. It's just nice because you've got all the, the gangways in this ship and it's marked off quite clearly but it doesn't detract from the game, from the, the environment itself. 
and it's good that they've made them double sided. So we've got a whole host of different areas. What could that be? That's like a, it's either a gym or a sports hall, or it could be tables for people who don't want to sit next to each other. I think what it looks like over there. Dining tables? <laughs> so I mean, oh, those, yeah, yeah. Um, we've got in total one, two, three, four, five, oh, there's 12. 12 double sided tiles. There's, there's loads. There's loads of really nice tiles and there's a good range of colours in there as well. We've got some purple ones there. We've got a lab with definitely some stuff that's <laughs> yeah. escaped. Um, oh, wow, that's that's had a bloodbath in it. So that's a bit grim. I don't know if that's if it's if that's more of a um, hot of them chambers. You like me normally seeing space films, so they have to go through and get this like cleaned mm. off sort of thing. And that's what it looks like to me. Yeah. Um, that is all of the uh, double-sided tiles, so we'll move those out of the way. Then we've got the refuge tile, and I'm not sure what this does, but it looks like it's got areas where you can slot the cards into from the top and the bottom. This is the trading post. Um, we'll have to get to that maybe in the rules and see what that does. Yeah. Uh, again, good quality card on that. And then finally for tiles, or you know the card parts of things we've got, these are the six-player dashboards. And these all have miniatures that go with them as well. So these are the different characters, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Although it does sort of seem like there's more than... I know there is six, so it's one for each. Quite thick. And it's only one-sided as well. From the beginning. Do you want to do it with the model at the same time? Or? Yeah, okay. We'll go straight right. on to the miniatures then. This is the captain. Very cool pose. She's in some sort of... I don't know what you would call that, really. Lycra. Maybe that's why it's yeah. a 14 plus, I don't know. She's quite cool though. So that's the captain. Next we have, what's next? Uh, we're gonna go with the marine next. Oh, the marine is my favorite. I know you, this is your favorite. Just looking at it, this is your sort of character. Yeah, it's got the cool pose. Long flowing uh, cape. It's got a cape, huge gun, cool pose. Yeah, I think he is my favorite. It's a nice model. Um, but I think you and me are gonna fight over it. Yeah. I think I'll let it, you it have has got, it has got that sort of Mass Effect slash Halo look to it. It's definitely got a futuristic look to it. It reminds me of Mass Effect, especially the card for the Psyker. Can you get the Psyker out, please? Uh, yeah, let's find it. Uh, there we go. So this reminded me of Mass Effect straight away. Very dynamic looking, or even X-Men like Storm. The miniature, however, though, is a bit... It's a bent. The hair's definitely different. I'm just disappointed by those ankle joints because it's such a thin piece of plastic look. Mm -hmm. there's, all, there's a lot of model on there. I'd probably have to rebase that or do something with it. Again, I'm looking at this as a miniatures game, not a board game. It's a board game. The amount of stuff you get inside here is just incredible. Well, if you're worried about that joint, do you think if you were to add a clip off the base, you could put a pin up right through the leg? Mm -hmm. It's look quite brittle. Bit, yeah. I probably would just reinforce it around the outside of that. Okay, the next one we've got is the Medic. Um, cool looking model, he's got a mask, he's got his hood. He's got some sort of medical wrist mounted thing. Thing, yeah. Um, backpack, quite cool. So you've got a Medic in there. Everyone needs a healer in the group. You It'll be interesting to see if, if, we, if when we have a quick, click, uh, quick flick through the rules as to whether you have to field the entire team or not. Yeah, I mean, it did say play, it, it did say collect, like play one of the humans. So maybe, I mean, you've got six, up to six players, so each one of you can play, play one of the characters. This is the Scout. I really like the model, other than the fact that it's a bit bent. It's, it's nicely done. And the fact that she looks like she's got horse legs. Is she even genetically <laughs> enhanced? <laughs> Look at that. She's got joints that seem to go backwards. Yeah, there's a bit of an odd one. She stood on her knees are in. Disappointing, really, because the, the, the look of the actual game and the rest of the stuff is really cool. It's just some of these characters have got weird deformations. But other than that, it's fine, to be honest. If you're buying this as a miniatures game, I'd probably say it's not, not going to be up to the same level as other stuff. But at the price for the amount of stuff you're getting in here as oh, a yeah, board game, it's, it's really good. It's on the same level as Zombicide, I would say. And I really like Zombicide. There's a lot of stuff in this box. So um, next we've got the engineer. This is the final player character. Oh, he's cool. 
Just that artwork on there is really nice. I, I quite like him. This basically looks like a tank, just heals stuff that are technical. He's got these two blow torches on his hands as well, which are cool. Just something we need to find out later on as well as, as if they all have weapons, because the medic doesn't look like he has. He's got that weapon. gauntlet thing. If you can cut through bone, you can cut through enemies. Yeah, I suppose. It'll be absolutely fine. So that is all of our characters that are inside there. Um, finally, though, you have got a card for the Titan, which is an absolute beast. I'm guessing it's some form of boss. Mm. And this has got the health on this thing. If we just have a look at the character, um, what's that? Resolve. Health and resolve points that are on there. And you've got equipment maybe there. You've got inventory and all sorts where you can put those cards on later on. But the health on these characters are 10. This Titan, 30 health on that Titan. It's absolutely yeah, amazing. Yeah, definitely going to take a lot to get rid of it. Yeah. Uh, it's nice that they've done a separate card for that, but the model is huge. Absolute beast of a model. And I really like it. It's about double the size of the normal, uh, the actual heroes, isn't it? Yeah, next to, um, let's bring out, what was that? The captain. Cool. And it's nice that they've done a separate card. In Zombie Side, there was the Abomination or whatever it is, the great big model. It doesn't have a card like this. It doesn't have the huge stats like this thing has got and the miniature is nowhere near the size of that so i'm quite impressed with that as a, as a boss um, in terms of the other miniatures that you get in here i may as well look at these at the same time so this is the cho xo loader and very much inspired by alien i think and potentially some games workshop miniatures giant mech suit it reminds me of the one from matrix actually without the giant guns oh yeah, yeah, yeah some sort of loader and we've got these giant arms that come off here. It looks like one of them has been broken. These don't seem to have cards, neither. It's no, so. none of this stuff has cards unless it's in... Now you've, the rest of the cards you get are item decks, the resolve deck, accomplishment deck, and the event deck. So you've got four types of card that we'll look at later. And we'll, we'll only briefly look through that because yeah. we're not going to play the game. This is just what do you get in the box and what do we think about it. But I, I really like the look of that thing. It's quite cool. Um, it's not brittle at all, actually. That one's really hard plastic. Then there are the Solomons. Now there's 10 of these, and these come in a big bag of miniatures. I don't know what type of creature this is. There's, going to, there's an explanation in the book, so we can have a look at that one. That's the Solomon. Then we've got 20 of these Jaegers, and it looks like some sort of rhino cross crocodile thing. I think they're my favorite mon 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 call of monsters in the box, because mm. But I think they're quite nice. Yeah, the Jaegers are nice. Uh, my favourite is actually this thing, the Swarmer. And this reminds me of the creatures out of Abe's Odyssey, if anybody played that. There was the, the courtyard with these dog-type hounds that they kept out there, and they had these big claws that just, like, jammed into the... They basically killed you. But I really like that. Swar swarmers. Definitely my favourite. Nasty-looking thing. Nasty-looking, creepy thing, and that's exactly what you want. Um, and then finally, we've got Icarus, and there's 20 of these, and this is... I don't know what it is. It looks like they've spliced a ter pterodactyl or something with a spider with, I don't know, Cthulhu. <laughs> really ugly. Is that like a thing. predator mouth or is that like horns coming from the side? I don't know. Maybe horns with a predator mouth, with a pteranodon, pterodactyl thing, with Cthulhu. That's quite a creation. So definitely original miniatures. Yeah. Original miniatures, original designs. So they're all the miniatures that you get in there. Like I say, that's only a bit. These swarmers, you get 30 of those. So they're quite cool. There's so in, many models in this box altogether. Yeah, in total. So out of those creatures, just the enemies, you've got 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 miniatures just on the monsters. And then you've got the Titan on top of that. So 81 enemies, the Exo Loader, and then six of the characters. In terms of miniatures, that's a, a hell of a lot. Um, cards we'll have a brief look at. Or did you want to quickly go over the bases that come with yeah, the miniatures? Actually. So we've got these bases, and they're all coloured, depending on who's who. We've got one for the captain, so it looks like the captain can only be the green colour. And these are very tight fit bases, you just slot them into there, and that shows you who's what colour. Quite cool. Yeah. Shift them out of the way. Dice. Dice, yeah. Now, it's supposed to be a very simple dice mechanic, or a very easy dice mechanic. And um, we don't seem to have too many special dice. Oh no. Um, we've got normal D6s with all of the sides on them, then the black and blue. And then we've got this one with arrows on it. I don't know what that represents, but there's one of those. 
It looks like his arrow is on every facing. Oh, it's Direct, the scattered. Maybe. Yeah, it's the scattered dice. Yeah. <clears throat> and then we've got the red dice, which has got run. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I'm not even going to guess. You've got <clears throat> one, two, three, three blank facings and three facings with things that I don't even know what they are, apart from maybe legs or socks. Um, then we're on to the cards. And um, we're just going to open these up. I've got well rested cards, I've got vaccinations, clean bill of health. There's a lot of cards in here. Um, radar token spawn. So there's a big chunk of those and you need them anyway. And what can we get on here? So we've got security, engineering bay, rec room, life support, crew quarters. So this is telling you where everything's going to be spawning, which rooms they're going to be in. Yeah. That's cool. We've got resolve deck, um, which is 20 cards in there. Vertigo, test for resolve. If you fail, lose one resolve and one health. Claustrophobia, if you begin your turn in a room, take a resolve test. Uh, Nyctophobia, you cannot move during blackouts, so you're afraid of the dark. Yeah. A, a, a remophobia, if you begin, I'm always learning stuff here. Nyctophobia and aremophobia. If you begin your turn in a zone not occupied by another survivor, take a resolve test. So, aremophobia must be when you don't like being by yourself. Yes. So, you're afraid of being alone. Scream, that's a very, phobia, you know, that's a different phobia. Place a level three noise token in your zone. Contagious panic, share the effect of the next resolve card revealed, which will be baraphobia. Each time the artificial gravity fails, you must take a resolve test. So they're cool. I like there's a lot can go wrong. I like the fact that it, you know, even as a, most of the time when you're playing these games, you're like, yes, I'm a very brave warrior. I'm going to run out and kill these monsters. Whereas those resolve decks force you to have a more narrative feel to it. Yeah. You know, the, the bloke around the corner is screaming his head off. And then your lights so go you're all, out, and then yeah, yeah, the lights go out, and you're actually afraid of the dark, and everything goes wrong. So that's quite good narratively. And um, we've got accomplishment decks. That's eighteen cards. And inside here, we've got combat training, the gambit, making it last. We've got all of these. So you've practiced on dummies, dummy targets, a hundred times. You can do this. Kill an enemy two zones from your location. So the reward is reroll one attack action. The new result is final. So maybe. Maybe you get one or the other. I don't know how they work, but it's good that, again, the narrative side of things, you've got stuff that expands it. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the Titan deck, and there's 20 cards inside here. I don't know if that's to control one Titan. Maybe it is. There's a lot of cards, though, in that case. So Onslaught, if damage is taken from this attack, draw another card. If damage is taken from this attack, draw another card. That's the same one. Piercing how all survivors must take a resolve test, draw another card. I don't know what attacks, terrifying gaze. Yeah, it's cool. So we've got cards just for the Titan. That's quite cool. And then what have we got in the final deck? Spirit Realm. Uh, no damage taken while. Uh, sorry. Uh, no damage taken when life support fails. Okay. What does that mean then? I'm not entirely sure. You've got good spirit, so it keeps you alive rather than your life support. Tactical evaluation. Reroll failed armor save once per round. Not bad. Sharpshooter, when attacking, dice rolls of six, add plus one die to the attack. And there's a lot of cards in it, but it looks uh, so the uh, Daybringer, immunity to the effects of blackouts, which is handy because we've already seen that that can happen. Yeah, if you get your resolve card and you're in the dark, you've got a, a mask that makes you immune to that. I mean, there's a lot, like you say, equilibrium, vengeance, you've got armor, that's cool. And the armor, oh, yeah, that's nice. Just having the vengeance armor gives you five plus shield, whatever that means. You've got a lot in there. And I don't know whether you start with some of this. Oh, look at this. Some of this armor is amazing. Repulsor armor. If you're playing like a computer game and you get a piece of armor like that, you're set for the game, aren't you? Yes, yeah. yeah. Monolith armor. I mean, just having the big heavy symbol on that means that that's amazing. But what's the effect of it? Minus two actions per turn. Two up. So that must be yeah, your so save. So you've got two up save. Yeah. So monolith armor is effectively Terminator armor. You've got Vengeance, which is a five up. If the armor blocks the hit, the attacker is dealt the damage instead. Not That's bad. really cool. So if somebody attacks you and you roll a five or more, you might kill them. Um, power cells, single use. What else have we got? Med kits. Got a lot of med kits. Teleporters, move to move one zone in any direction. Now we've got the plasma cutters, which we saw on the engineer. And then it looks like it's a dual wielding weapon, so you can have two of those. 
I don't know how what these mean, but it looks like maybe a four up to wound them. Do you think they could possibly be used for opening doors and stuff like that that might be locked? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. We've got magical blades, swarm of legs. So you can use a leg as a weapon and dual wield them. So once you've killed them, you just pick the leg up. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Pistols, dual wield, medical lasers, assault rifles, void cannons, riot grenades. They're really cool. And then what are these? I don't know what they are. They've got numbers on them. Uh, and then finally, we've got the Refuge event deck. So all survivors minus two health, all survivors minus one, unlucky. These are all things that basically mess you up a little bit more. Absolutely lot tons. Go wrong. Yeah, which you'd expect. You're on a ship that you've been... You it's know, definitely going to put you on the edge through the entire game. Yeah, because you don't know what's going to happen. You've been, um, you've been faffing with genetics, you've created some monsters that have broken out on your ship and your ship's on its way out and all of these cards represent what's happening. Mm. Really cool. I really like it. Um, right, let's have a look inside the, the book. This is the rule book. Hopefully you can see some of this. It's a bit of a glare from our wonderful lighting. Um, but it, uh, the object of the game, Endure the Stars is a cooperative action survival game for one to six players. Um, you're basically on the ship, the Hikari, which we said at the beginning. Players take on the roles of the last surviving members of the crew who were almost completely wiped out when the GEP's genetically engineered creatures designed to aid in the colonization of the destination planet escaped their confinement and massacred anything in their path. So they're searching the ship for fellow survivors, supplies, and anything else that can help them survive another day. You choose between a variety of character classes, each with their own strengths and weaknesses and special abilities that can turn the tide. Um, searching the derelict and abandoned areas of the ship is a vital part of gameplay, and players must always be aware of the noise they are making. Many dangers await anyone brave enough to enjoy the stars. Um, and inside here we've got the component breakdowns and what you actually get, which we've been through anyway. Um, then we've got all the rules for playing the game, the basics of playing, um, setting up all of the character cards, um, the survivor phase, enemy phase, and how that works. And uh, again, it's played by the, the game itself. So it's a, a cooperative game. Whatever you draw is what happens where the, the, the enemies spawn and that sort of thing. And mm -hmm. depending on the noise tokens, that's where they go towards. So distracting items, seeing a survivor and hearing a noise, that's what they move towards. Then you've got the enemy phase itself, the resolution phase. Oh, here we go. You can see what them dice are now. So um, nothing happens on three of them. One of them, combat range is reduced by one. Um, and at the beginning of the survivor, turn, roll a dice, on a 1 to 3 you lose 1 health, on a 4 to 6 nothing happens. So when you take damage, something else can then happen. Maximum movement is reduced by 1, so that's a broken leg. He hasn't just forgot his sock. Resolution I'm still not sure what these are though, don't I? I don't mind, that looks like it's a helmet. Helmet, armour, legs. Armour, yeah. Um, resolution phase, combat, combat, advanced rules. Um, and then you've got all your missions which are in here and there's 12 missions and they go from, by the look of it, easy, that's the tutorial and they've got the timer on these as well. Yeah, so it seems it's more a case of the mission is where it, the time comes into rather than how many people you've actually got playing. Yeah, so that one's 70 minutes, you've got 50 minutes, 50. Is that a rough estimation or is that the actual time limit you have? Mm -hmm. No, it will just be a rough estimate, I imagine. You could play it as either, couldn't you? But like we could sit and talk about the rules. I don't think it's going to have an actual time limit unless you get really good on the rules and you just play through it mm, in a time yeah, limit. You could do that. But there's a lot of a lot of missions in here to actually play, and you know some of them were 180 minutes. Once it? it was 30 to 180 minutes, but there's nothing here that are 180. So 40 is the smallest I've seen so far. So I imagine 40 minutes is the time that they expect you to. To, to play it, but it could go up to 180 if you're like you and me, where we have to keep rereading re all of the rules. Yeah. And each mission shows you which tiles you use to put it all together, which is cool. 90 minutes, that's the longest one so far, so that's it. And then at the end, we've got an explanation of what all of the characters are um, and where they come from. We've got the enemies as well, the GEPs, and we've already seen them, so Icarus, Swarmer, Jaeger. Um, we can have a quick look, actually, what the Icarus actually is. 
designed as an alternative reconnaissance option to the Jaeger, given its flight capabilities, it was to be deployed in the upper atmosphere and it's able to cover much more ground than the Jaegers. However, an unforeseen mutation developed in the Icarus that allowed them to create an acidic projectile. After several deaths of the research team, the project was marked for extermination. The GEPs were freed before the Icarus uh, were terminated and now they stalk the ship along with the other monstrous creatures. So it's quite cool that they've gone into the background of these. Yeah. We've got the Solomon. I mean, this this one, the Primus, isn't actually doesn't have a miniature for that. Uh, neither does the Artemis or the Olympian. So maybe they're what are in the expansion, which we've actually got. Yeah, could be. We'll have a look at that. But that's pretty much the end of the book. Um, at the end, you've got your summary, Redeemers of Purpose. You've got fanat Fanatics and Zealots and the Preacher. Again, that might all be expansion stuff. Yes. Um, but all in all, it's a quite quick book. You've got your summary at the end. I'm quite impressed with the amount of stuff you get in that starter set. That's a lot of stuff. Um, we'll have a quick look at the, the extra box we've got. Shall yep. we have a see what's inside there? Yep. And it does look. So this is the cybernetic onslaught. And it does say, this is not a complete game. Endure the star's core game required, which is what we've got. So we'll have a quick look inside here. And... Ooh. So this is what we were saying about maybe the other boxes, the main box, having these sort of cases to hold all the miniatures in. Yes, and keeping them a little more obscure and safe. Oh god, these have all got flight stands. Oh, he's cool. What is that? So first of all, you've got extra character cards inside here. We've got the technician, which, oh, is that the technician? Looks more robot -y. Yes, I'd say that was the technician. Oh, there's two technicians. We've got two technicians, we've got the Olympian, and then we've got the cards for the two technicians. So we'll put those counters and those cards to one side. So this looks like a, a female technician. Really cool, massive claw, gravity looking gun thing, cool cloak, really dynamic looking. Um, stats wise, they've got the same health and resolve as everything else, but obviously they might be equipped with something different at the start. So that's the female one. Then we've got the male, which I actually like. This reminds me of Destiny. That is like that that type of race from Destiny. I don't know what they're called. You have to no, know. Know. He reminds me from um, I can't remember his name from um, Mass Effect. Yes. Yeah. I do want to, yeah. The, the green one, the assassin. Yeah. Being possibly, I can't remember. Yeah, he's like dying in that. That's really cool. Nice gun. Nice cloak. Cool head. Nice pose. So the technicians are the new favourites. And then we've got the Olympian, which is the big creature we saw in that starter set. Yeah. So this thing is on bigger. the same scale as the Titan, but bigger. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Look, what's his health like? Is it the same amount of health? Yeah. I actually like this on this Olympian more than the, the other one. Awesome. And then what have we got? We have the 10 of these sips. And that's, um, that's your technical word for it, I just said. And then we've got 10 of the Artemis, which is almost like a floating drone type thing. Interesting. Yeah, it's not my, my sort of thing, I don't think. I'm more the big nastiest, I think. Mm, it's definitely something different. But as an expansion pack, again, you're getting 20 more creatures you're getting another boss, you're getting two characters, and you're getting all the cards so that yeah, go the model count in each of these boxes seems to be insane. Worth the money for definite. Yeah, and then you get the cards. You've got um, the, it's the Olympian deck, 22 cards. So there's a mix of stuff that's in there. No extra weapons or items. It's just a bunch of um, uh, Olympian cards. So that's how to actually use this boss character in the game. It's a lot of cards for a boss. Well, there's 20 for the Titan and we've got 20 for the Onslaught now. That's really cool. Um, well, you've got an injury die, so in the bottom of the box, we, we don't even need to take that one out really. That's okay. um, You're getting an injury die, which is a black and it's basically the same as this red one that we had that shows you what's happened and you're getting some tokens as well. But all, all in all, that's pretty good. I'm, I'm impressed. It also comes along with the uh, the clips for the bases again. Yes, so we've got the base stands, which doesn't say, yeah. So I don't know why it's a 14 plus uh, for a start. I don't know why. 
I don't, my guess will be it's just going to have not, a grim. It's not a children's toy, age 14 plus hobby gaming product, so maybe they expect 13 year olds to choose. Although, although the story is quite grim and nasty, and yeah, stuff. Quite it's not a great outlook. No, um, I'm really excited to play this, you know. Yeah, I, I want to try it, it, it. It's coming across to me, I don't know if you're having the same sort of feeling on it, that mm. it's, it's like those horror games. Like on consoles where you're going down corridors, there's no lights and stuff, and things just jump out at you. Yeah, it's very much uh, like Mass Effect, Resident Evil, um, Dino Crisis even, because you've got the animal, you've got the genetically enhanced side of things where they've all escaped, so it reminds me of that sort of game. Yeah, it, it's definitely the idea that I'm getting from it. And not even looking at the rules, I'm immediately saying it's like zombie side, but that's because that's what I played in the past, and that's similar to what I think it is. To, to the gameplay, but we need to try it. And Rachel absolutely loves this sort of game, so I think we'll we'll take this and I don't think I've really tried any of these types of games because I haven't even played Zombie Side yet. Oh, you'll love it until Rachel leaves you to die, which she'll definitely do on this one. She'll. Just I think be... I would die without seeing what Zombie Side is exactly like. I think I'd be one of the people that would just charge forward on my own. Just I do that, go on. <laughs> but then Rachel tells you you're playing it wrong and you have to play it her way, and then she goes, "Right, you go in that room." Yeah, I don't wear that way. And then she shuts the door and then you yeah, die. I don't wear that way. <laughs> no. um, really cool. Really nice of um, Grimlord Games to actually send us the, the main game yeah. and the expansion set to have a look through. So thank you very much for that. If you enjoy board games, if you like things like uh, Zombie Side and, and that type of game, um, if you've played this as well, let us know how it actually plays before we get into it. It'll be good to know. And definitely worth looking into this uh, if that is your sort of, your sort of thing. So um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe as always. And we'll see you on the next unboxing. Thank you for, for joining us on this one. See you. Bye.